Set in Victorian England, Yana Toboso's Black Butler, 2006, a Japanese manga, follows 14-year-old Seal Phantom Hive, the last surviving member of an aristocratic family, as he sells his soul to his demon butler in exchange for the ability to take revenge on his parents' murderers. The manga, first serialized in the magazine Monthly G Fantasy, also has been published in volumes by Square Enix. Still ongoing, the series has been translated and published in several countries around the world. A 24-episode anime adaptation has also been released. It is Morning at the Grand Phantom Hive Manor. Sebastian Michaelis, the handsome yet mysterious butler, is waking his young master for the day. Count Seal Phantom Hive, a 14-year-old boy with a gloomy expression and an eye patch over his right eye, is briefed on the schedule for the day. As his family's heir, Seal is now the owner of the Phantom Company, England's fastest-growing toy company. Sir Claus is coming from Italy with the usual goods, a difficult-to-obtain board game, and Sebastian oversees the preparations for their guests' visit. Everything must be perfect to live up to the legendary hospitality of the Phantom Hive name, but the manor's clumsy staff, Finney, the gardener, Maylene, the maid, and Bard, the chef, each bungle their respective areas. Thinking quickly, Sebastian rescues the evening by covering the dead garden with gravel and changing it into an elegant Japanese rock garden. He serves green tea in place of the ruined black tea, and the burned meat is shaved over rice to make a donburi, completing the Japanese-themed evening for Sir Claus. Sebastian excuses the praise he receives, slyly saying he is simply one hell of a butler. The next day, Seal and Sebastian leave the manor to buy Seal a new cane. When they return, the manor is decorated in hearts and ribbons, and the staff is awkwardly dressed in bunny ears. When Seal asks what is going on, Elizabeth jumps out and hugs him. Sebastian explains to the confused staff that Elizabeth is Seal's fiancée. Like many nobles, the heads of their families arranged their marriage long ago. Elizabeth demands to hold a dance, but Seal sulks. He insists that he must work and does not have time for little girls' games. Sebastian quickly ascertains the truth, however, Seal does not know how to dance. Sebastian quickly instructs him in the waltz, but says the most important thing is for him to smile. He cannot be a proper noble if he sulks at the sidelines of every ball. At the dance, Seal wears the clothes that Elizabeth picked for him, but she becomes upset when she sees he is wearing an old ring that does not match the rest of the outfit. When he refuses to take it off, she snatches it from his hand and breaks it. Seal flies into a rage and nearly strikes Elizabeth, but Sebastian interferes. The ring is a family heirloom, passed down through the generations to every head of the family. Having composed himself, Seal smiles and invites Elizabeth to dance, giving her the ball of her dreams. That night, Sebastian presents Seal with the ring, magically repaired. The next day, the staff chases a rat around the manor while Seal plays billiards with a mysterious group. Seal offers to catch a rat for one of the men, Duke Randall, but demands that compensation be ready for him when the deed is done. Duke Randall reluctantly agrees, and the party disperses. Soon after, however, Seal is kidnapped from his room. Seal finds himself the captive of Azuro Venner of the Italian Mafia. Azuro, angry with Seal for obstructing the Mafia's ability to deal drugs in England, demands to know where the goods are. Seal will not cooperate so Azuro says he will execute his staff. Just then, Azuro receives a phone call, his goons were unable to capture the staff thanks to Sebastian, and now Sebastian is hunting them down. Finally, Sebastian captures them, and they reveal where Seal is being held. He then throws them off a cliff. Panicked, Azuro fortifies the hideout, but despite all the guards, Sebastian seems to materialize out of thin air inside the hideout. Easily dodging hundreds of bullets, Sebastian defeats the kidnappers. In fact, his main concern is that Seal is going to be late for dinner. Shocked, the kidnappers wonder who Sebastian is. He answers that he is merely one who is worthy of being the Phantom Hive House's butler. Having reached the final room, Sebastian finds Azuro with a gun to Seal's head. Azuro demands the goods, and as Sebastian is just about to reveal where they are, more kidnappers appear in the doorway. They shoot him several times. Sebastian collapses and remains motionless. Azuro says that if Seal were to vanish, the Italian Mafia would be free to take over England for their business. However, they will not simply kill Seal. 
they are going to sell him back to those perverts. Just then, Sebastian rises, holding all the bullets he was shot with in his hand. He flings them with superhuman speed at the kidnappers, and they all drop dead. Terrified, Azuro again holds the gun to Seal's head. Tired, Seal demands to know whether Sebastian is going to hurry up and rescue him or whether he is going to go against the contract. To spur Sebastian to action, Seal reveals the demonic mark on his right eye, normally covered by the eye patch, and Azuro freaks out. He pulls the trigger, but Sebastian catches the bullet in midair before it can strike Seal. As Sebastian leaves with Seal, Azuro offers him money to come work for him. Sebastian reveals that he is a demon bound by contract to serve Seal until the time when his soul becomes mine. I hope you enjoyed this video leave a like if you did and be sure to subscribe thank you.